Hey everybody, what's going on? Um, not your typical guide, because I'm not going to tell you how to play the game. But I'm going to tell you how to use somebody else's guide to figure out how to level. If that makes any sense. So, what I mean is, uh, I am enjoying, thoroughly enjoying Last Epoch. If you play the Diablo games, so like Last Epoch or um, the, the other games similar to them. Um, but kind of picks up where Diablo 2 left off. I think they went in a great direction with skills and passives, which is kind of why I'm making this video. Uh, it, you've got a ton of, ton of flexibility in how you build your character, uh, how you outfit your character, and how you play them. Just because the skills, the trees, the armor, the weapons, the perks, the idols... All these things go in to contribute your play style, survivability, your damage, glass cannon, tank, all that other stuff. There are so many possibilities and combinations that you really do need to spend a little time um, maybe watching some videos from people such as Moxie or Riker, and there's a few others out there, um, or even hanging out in their streams to figure out what class does what. You can come to Max Roll GG. They've got a good list and a good breakdown of the of the of the, the 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 classes and the builds that are easy enough to understand. You can get a general idea of what you're doing. So I'd recommend. This is where everybody's recommend coming. This is why the purpose of my videos. I'm gonna actually try to tell you how to explain how to use their leveling guide because a couple of my friends have been a little confused on the skills and the passive point allocations and how the guide doesn't show it or it does show it and where you're supposed to be. <clears throat> But what I would recommend if you're new to Last Epoch, just take take 20, 30 minutes, come down here, read about the passives, read about the gear walkthrough, read about the crafting. Don't worry about crafting till later in the game. I'm going to tell you right now. Crafting is going to be big for your wins in endgame for min-maxing and all that other stuff. The crafting system is not overly complicated. It's not simple either, but you can figure it out after you've used it enough. But I'm not going to work on that one, but you can read about it. Uh, loot filter is the same thing. You can make a loot filter so it only shows stuff that you're interested in once you understand the gear you need. Or you just copy paste somebody's from a leveling guide or from a build guide. Uh, factions, um, there's two factions in the game. Just to explain those real quick, you have Circle of Fortune, which if you select that one, that means you're going to have a higher drop rate, better drop rate, better drops kind of a thing. Merchants Guild is going to let you do interactions with auctions and, and selling and buying, selling and buying kind of thing. But the biggest thing to remember is if you played for a while the circle of fortune you decide to switch to merchants which you can switch back and forth between when you switch to merchants you cannot use any of the gear you've got you obtained while you were circle of fortune and vice versa they don't intermix they they don't uh, swap out you have to have sets you can carry them in your inventory you can carry them in your vault or your chest or stash whatever you want to call it but you if you're a merchant you have to have merchant if you're circle of fortune you have to have circle of fortune if I'm a circle of fortune, I can't have both circle of fortune and merchant gear. It doesn't work that way. So just remember that. <clears throat> uh, you can go through, again, read all these stuff, the end game, how to do the power in min-maxing, using idols, gear perks, crafting, and all that other stuff. For this, though, we are going to focus on build guides. Now, if you're not sure what you want to play, here's the tier list. And I can't tell you which the best one is. If you're just speed farming, there's one set of S tiers. If you're lit leveling and you just want to get a bunch of levels out there, there's another one. Just remember, you cannot change your mastery. Uh, it's the only thing in the game you cannot respect. Once you choose your mastery, you can't change it. Okay, and you're going to find out about masteries in just a minute. But there's corruption tier list um, for when you get to the super end game. Uh, there's boss killing. You might have speed farming for lots of ads. Not so great at... A single 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 damage target uh, or a hammered in for paladins amazing aoe amazing ad clear a little bit lower on the dps for for boss fights um so you're going to really have to work on getting your gear in order to be able to do a lot of the bigger big boss fights efficiently um but that's where those are at we're gonna go to the build guide and as you can tell, they have a sentinel, which is like your sword and board, your tank kind of a build, where's plate and armor and everything else uh, kind of builds. Uh, there's three masteries from Paladin, Forge Guard, and Void Knight. Um, think uh, Holy, think Tank, 
think uh, Death Knight <clears throat> kind of ish, sort of. And then you have your rogues, you have your masters here, you have your basic, you have your marksman, your blade dancer, and your falconer. The marksman's going to be more single shot, kind of heavy ish. I haven't played it, so I can't really speak to blade dancers, more like your assassin. Your falconer is more of your ranger, okay? Mages have a similar setup. You have the different masteries here, Sorcerer, Spellblade, and Rune Master. I have played the, the Rune Master, which is a lot of fun. It's an elementalist, lots of damage, mid-range, to a little bit farther range. Spellblade is your uh, more like a battle mage where they're melee and spells mixed together. I'm looking to play that one next. You have your Primalists, which are your Druid classes and Beastmasters and stuff, and your Acolytes, which are your Liches, your Necromancers, your Warlocks, uh, kind, of a, kind of a build thing. So you have a lot of options and now you're coming to this page and you're like, okay. And you're like, okay, Sentinel, Rogue, Mage, Primal, Stack, like what am I going to play? And you're like, I'm going to play a Rogue. Okay, cool. You click on Rogue. You're like, okay, I've got a level of Rogue. Uh, you kind of did a little bit of reading. So you know what the breakdowns are. You know, I'm going to be a Blade Dancer. Let's say I'm going to be a Blade Dancer later in the game. I want this character. They're going to mastery a Blade Dancer at level 20. 20 to 22 you can unlock mastery at 20 depending on where you're in the campaign and then you can go from there right uh, so i'm going to be a blade dancer and as you can see there's three blade dancer builds you're like all right what am i supposed to do here now you can click on end game and it's going to show you the two recommended end game builds but if you're leveling and you're just starting out and you need help through, this is where it is. You're just going to click on leveling and all of a sudden, okay, I'm a Blade Dancer. This is my Blade Dancer leveling guide. This is the one that Max GG's put out. They have different um, people that have wrote it. Uh, looks like Tarek is the one that made this one. So this is, if you've been to Max GG, Max World GG before, um, this is pretty traditional for what they have. Um it's, it's, you know, I like Max Roll. There's Icy Veins and a few others that do things. Max Roll seems to be the one that is um, pretty much on fire for this. A lot of the streamers are the ones recommending it. I've used Max Roll for lots of different games in the past, so I'm, I'm pretty, pretty good with it. Um, so you come in here and you can see they got a good table of contents that walks you through what you need to do, give you a general idea of what the gameplay style is, what a Blade Lant Dancer is. Uh, keynotes for the leveling kind of things you want to focus on they give you basic videos on maybe the content the, the the dps rotations as you get higher in levels and then they they give you your skills your passives they kill you some some gearing and side quests side quests do all the side quests that's how you're going to get a lot of things unlocked faster like your idle slots uh, and extra passive points all right um, it's going to tell you about a loot filter. If you want to download their loot filter and copy that in. So the only thing in the highlights and stuff on your screen for the loot that drops are, which is more pertinent to your build and to you. So if you're running with your friends, you're not going to so much see their stuff that might be beneficial to them, but more for you. But the whole purpose of this one here is the skills and the passives as this is where most of my friends that had questions were getting a little confused. And I'm not going to lie, when I first came to this one, I got a little confused on it too. I read this, took me a second, I looked down, and I realized there's two scroll spots on this and the slider bar, right? So, let's talk about this. Skills are on the right-hand side. You have five skills that you can unlock and maintain leveling on at any time. That doesn't mean you can't use your other skills, but you have five skills that you can actively level. And they'll get unlocked the higher you level are in levels. And then as you unlock them, once it's unlocked, you select the skill that you want to put into that slot, and then you start leveling it, okay? And then here's your passes, which are on the left-hand side. You have, as I showed you before, you have your base. So you have your rogue, right? If we look up here, come up to the top, we have, uh, we'll open this here. We have a rogue, which is the base, and then we have marksman, blade dancer, and falconeer. All right, <clears throat> So we'll come back down to skills and passives. So you have your rogue right here. And each one of these ones represents the mastery. As you can see, I clicked on this, this. If I click on this one, it tells me that I'm on the rogue node, which is your basic node for the rogue overall. If I click here on this node where my mouse is, it now tells me that's the blade dancer node. If I click on here, that's the marksman node. And then there's the falconeer node. And then if I click over here, it tells me the name of the skill, which is flurry. And as I get higher up, I can get puncture, um, shift, you know, smoke bomb, synchronized, 
different things. These are the ones, the skills they're going to recommend that as you're playing the game, that you put points in or level them up. Now, that said, let's go back to the basics here. We're going to do a quick down and dirty on this and hopefully get past the confusion. As you saw just a second ago, I was like, okay, there's before level five, there's before level 16, and then there's the final setup. Now, you need to keep in mind, too, that not all these not all the guides are going to do, um, so if we do Sentinel, and we do leveling, and we come to Forged, not all the passive skills are going to use the same naming convention setup. Um, this one's before level five, not, and then the next one is, doesn't say before level 16. This is before five points in the multi-strike. It's, it's giving you a little bit more specifics on skill sets. So it might be a little more deeper dive. You might have to understand what each one of these skills and, and, and passes are before you get the understanding that you get the final setup. Well, we're going to go back to the road, the, to the, the rogue blade dancer build here. So let's say you've logged into the game, you created your rogue and you've leveled up to level four pretty easy to do you've killed a few exploding things uh you killed a few birds maybe a giant bear uh, and you're level four so you got four passive points to distribute it's going to pop up in the bottom of your bar on the left hand side it's a little plus sign and it's say hey you got some four points to, to do on there but you come over here and you're looking at this guide okay it says before four before level five i've got four points because it's assuming you're level four we're just going to assume you're level four it says four here level four but if you look at these passes let me zoom in if you look, there's no points allocated, but if you look at this bar right here, it's all the way over to the left. You have four points that are possibly to be invested into the rogue skill, which is where it wants you to, to be, as this is the highlighted one, this is where we need to be. That's where the slider bar comes into play, okay? If I click once, I have now told this information that's being presented in these nodes that I have, I have spent one point. And they've spent one point and they say the first point put it in a swift assassin you come down here spend another point by clicking oh i've got two points in swift so they're recommending you put your first several points in several points into swift assassin and as you can see okay i'm level four boom i got that and then you're like i stop where am i gonna go it doesn't do anything else well this is as far as the guide before level five goes it's kind of self-explanatory um where this the confusion comes from is like i said before on this one, again, this is before level five. When I come to here, it doesn't tell me number of points or anything. Whereas this one, if I click, it says before level 16. So it's assuming I'm going to have 15 points, right? Plus maybe the stuff I've got from doing side quests to give me extra passive points. Some people are asking, I don't understand. I have 20 passives, but I'm only level 15. Well, if you've done side quests, you can potentially have that. And you can have them. That's why I recommend making sure you do the side quests, which are these little blue diamond quests. All right. So now that we've advanced from before level five to love before level 16, we have now unlocked the opportunity to spend more points in the leveling guide. So where we left off is we have had spent four points. And you see that clicking here from before level five to before level 16 doesn't change my slider now. Now that I've said it, it's not going to change it. So now, before level 16, I'm still on the rogue node right here. If you, saw, if you can tell, I'm still on the rogue node. And then I'm just going to click. I'm level 5. Boom, 5 points. Level 6, 6 points. Level 7, 7 points. Level 8, 8 points. I'm now level 9. I'm going to come down here and put some points into Guile. I'm going to put a point into Evasion. I'm going to put a point into Agility. I'm just going to keep following their guide. And until it changes, until something changes, okay? And you're like, okay, and I've got a few passives I can spend, but this is where it's at. So I've done 8, 9, 10, 15. I have five more points, so I'm just going to keep going. 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Got to put one point into Twin Blade. Now, be, until you select your mastery in the game, until you go in, you do the quest chain and get your mastery done, you're kind of in limbo here because you're not going to be able to invest points in the other, other nodes until you've unlocked the mastery. So a lot of points have, a lot of people have these extra passive points and they're just dumping them in here and they don't remember where they put them so you're going to have to keep track of that because you can always go back when you're in the game, in the cities, there's going to be 
like a, an icon with a, a purple brain, you go talk to that person that lets you respect your passives. Skills you can do anywhere. You can respect your spill your skills at any time, any place, as long as you're not in combat. Well, I would I think you can do them in combat, but I wouldn't recommend it because you might die. Um, anyways, so we've got the 20, and I can't go any further. Okay. And that's Again, the question is, well, how do you have 20 points if you're only level 15? It says before 15, 16. Because I did side quests. I got the passes. Now, I want to advance further. I'm going to go click on the final setup, right? Nothing's changed. There's still 20 points here. I'm still on the rogue node. You can see this isn't changed. I'm still on the rogue node. I have chosen to be a blade dancer as my mastery. Okay. So now, I'm going to, then I'm level... 16 i'm going to come over here and you can see or 20 i think is where it has to happen it's going to allow me to go to the blade dancer now right i've chosen that as my mastery and i'm just going to start dropping points into whatever they recommend the first point into blade dancer is going to be uh pursuit right and i'm just going to keep going four points into pursuit five and then you see how there's five of eight sometimes people just say, i'm just going to dump all of them in there no no there, there's, they have certain numbers in the build guides. So you just follow the build guides. Again, you don't have to stick to them if you don't want to. There's lots of trees, lots of fun to do uh, is, is, um, is a build. In when I'm playing on my Sentinel on my Paladin, I chose Lunge. They didn't recommend doing much points into spite, uh, a Smite, but I liked it because I would leap forward, I could get health, and I could just do lightning, just tons of it. So I enjoyed a Smite build, which wasn't in the leveling guide. So just keep that in mind is you don't have to, they're more like a, Barbosa said, it, it's more like a set of guidelines, right? You know, um, it's not rules. It's more like guidelines. This is what this is, a guideline. Um, it's to help you level up. Anyways, as you go, you just keep clicking until you get to certain points and then be mindful here. Watch what happens here in a second. I, I'm getting to uh, a certain number of levels of, of points. So eight, 16, and then it kicks me over Falconeer. I'm mastered in Blade Dancer, but the leveling guide, after I put 16 points into Blade Dancer, kicked me over to the Falconeer node. And I'm like, what? And the people that are doing is I don't understand. Again, they're recommending how to unlock certain passes and skills that you're going to use to play in the game as you go, right? And so this is where it's coming. They're building a foundation and then you're building your skills on top of that and your dps and you just follow the side scroll until you get to that point you got five points invested now into raptor's wings i click again now i'm getting points into wilderness scout and this is about dps survivability kind of a thing and you follow this and a lot of times if if you go do your own thing you're going to be like a glass cannon do tons of damage but you get hit once or twice and you're dead so they're trying to balance it out and what's a lot of these guides are doing are trying to balance it that way anyways you keep doing the points and as you can see now i clicked on this bar down here to do another point investment see where it goes and it pushed me right back to the blade dancer node right where i left off now it's telling me to put a point in the cloak of shadows it's going to keep through. It's going to tell me to put a point into sh Shout of uh, Dusk. Now, remember, you see these little dots right here? This represents uh, it's one dot. That means before I can come from, before I can go to Cloak of Shadows, before, to Shout of Dusk, I have to invest one point, one point into Cloak of Shadows, which lets me now go to the Dusk node. Okay, you see this node here isn't unlocked. I can't do anything here. I can't put a point here. If I had it, I can't put a point in apostasy. Now, once I click on this and it shows that I've put a point in the Shroud of Dusk, I can now, because it's only one point requirement, go into either of these trees. That's how that point works. Less important on the passives, more important on the skills. But if you are respecting either one of them, remember, if you've got a point, say, invested here, and you want to get rid of Cloak of Shadows, you can't do that because if you don't have Cloak of Shadows, you don't have Shroud of Dusk. So you've got to keep that in mind, okay? So you're just going to come through. You keep following the guides until all the points are spent in the passives, and you're pretty much ready to go. Now, all the points have been spent. That's fantastic. Those are passives. You notice I've done across the scroll bar here. My passives have been done. They haven't gone into skills which are what you use in combat passes are always running they're always in the background and passes unlock some of your skills some skills you have base some of the skills you have to unlock via the passive 
And you'll notice here, at before level five, you only have one skill that's unlocked that can be leveled up. You have other skills you can use, but there's only one skill that can be unlocked and leveled up. And then at 16, and it goes up from there. You, as you level up, you unlock these skill nodes. Now these work on the same, same premise as the sliding bar, just like with the passives. You're gonna put in here, you're gonna click on this, this one that's unlocked, and it's gonna be empty. You click on it, and you go to the skill tree, and then you can select the one that they want you to level up or recommend you level up. In this case, it's Umble Blades. So I'm going to come in here. I click on it. And there's going to be a little bar over here, a bunch of choices. I'm going to find Umble Blades, click on it, and then it's going to take me to this. And it's going to associate it to that skill. Now I'm just going to say, follow the same thing. I'm going to do one point into Downfall. I'm going to do one point into Sword Trigger. Now remember, just like I said before, I can't, until I put a point into Downfall, I can't put a point into sword tower, right? And so they're putting a point there. Just like over here, you can see right here, there's maybe, let me zoom in a little bit more. Yeah. <clears throat> there's four dots. That means that I have to put four of five points invested into Jagger Cravings if I, or uh, four of five into Cut and Leave if I want to invest anything in Kunai Belt. Okay. If I don't, I, I won't be able to. Same if I want to avoid Twilight assault, assault, I need to have two of five into Jagged Cravings. Anyways, you got the Salt thing selected. You're just going to keep following it. The 20 points, first one's going to go into Downfall. The next point's going to go into Sword Thrower and then one into Lethal Darkness. I'm just following this around and, and, and following their instructions, you know, Precision Cuts, another point into Edge. And then I've got this unlocked, and it just takes you through as you level where the order that they want you, they think that is the best for progressing your DPS, survivability, your skill, and all around damage for humble blades. Same thing for like with you doing shift or any of your other skills, no matter what you put in there, you're going to follow the same mechanism and you're just going to start going across. So if you ever, if you just want to say, hey, screw it, I've got 20 points, which you probably won't if you just switch to it, or if you respect, you're going to have, again, with this, passives, the points don't go away. Okay, they just don't go away. With this, when you respect, I mean, like, if if you, like, um, you put a point into Consume Shadow, and you're like, oh, I didn't want to put that point there, and you click on respect, and then you click on it by one, you're going to spend a little gold, you're going to remove that point, but that point is now gone. You're going to have to go play the game. You're going to have to level it up, which towards the end game is not a problem. It goes pretty quick. Early on might take a little bit longer to, to level up the, the skills once you've respect them. But overall, it's not that difficult to do. So figure that out and get through. Make sure you're leveling and when you unlock them. You don't have to do it right away if you don't want to. Some of them are going to recommend in the final setup for certain things. You might be level 35 or 40, and you're going to be on the setup because this one's only up to good to level 16. And then you switch over final setup, and like, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't have these. Well, you haven't gotten all the points invested because you're not high enough level to have the points to go into Blade Dancer to unlock the skills. They're going to give you these extra skills for combat. Now, as soon as you unlock them, some people are like, well, I don't want to lose my DPS because I've unlocked two skills. Well, pick one, like on on on. Uh, my falconeer um, puncture is what I've been using in place while I'm leveling up my trap, my 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 my, my trap bombs, right? <clears throat> so if you come here, you can see. Um, let me switch this over. Build guides, rogue, falconeer, leveling. I'm gonna click here, and you can see that it the trap bombs but I don't have an, uh, my puncture, but when I'm starting out, I'm using puncture. I'm starting out and I'm leveling my, my, my guy. I'm using puncture. I've put a lot of time into it. And then, so as I was leveling up falconry, and then once I unlocked explosive traps, I didn't start using smoke bomb right away. I wanted to get my puncture. I wanted to get fire trap or explosive traps up and all their points so I can maintain damage and I kept my puncture until I had that at 20, and then I switched over, and then I started doing it, because you can only level five skills at a time. So please, please remember that. Uh, they give you the easy setup for the bar rotations on the bottom. Again, the videos do the same thing. If you have questions, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, 
I think Max Roll GG. I'm not sponsored by them. I'm not plugged by them. I'm just trying to give you guys an overview on how to use their leveling guides a little bit more effectively, how to navigate their site a little bit more. I think it's fantastic. After you play to level 40 or 50, I highly recommend getting the campaign through. Play through at least once. Then you can level your alts. You can get to the end of time and you can start doing monolith and power leveling them and, and all that stuff so you don't have to replay the campaign. I like the campaign. I think it's a decent storyline. You can learn quite a bit as you're going. Once you've got that, learn about crafting, learning about the loot filter, um, learn about your skills, learn about the idols, how to play, how to gear your guy out, how to do this. Early monolith, it's going to tell you in the gear when you come down here, it's going to give you the basic recommendations as I said before. You're going to be able to get basic drops, but the crafting is going to be very, very important as you go at this point on. So just remember that. Again, if you guys are having fun, gals are having fun, let me know. I love the game. I love playing all sorts of games. Again, if you, I'm going to link this down below. Uh, I'll also link to a couple of the guys that are covering it that I think do a really good job of coverage and guide building and everything. Uh, but if you're playing, let me know what you're playing. Uh, I'm interested. My buddy and designer are enjoying this. I'm enjoying the fact that games are coming out now that are fun to play. They might not be AAA games, but they're they're kicking the butt. Pal Worlds was fun. And Shrouded was fun. Last Epoch was fun. Uh, Helldivers 2, while I'm not actively playing it, I did play it a little bit. It was a lot of fun for $40, $30. Let's uh, see. Power World, $27. And Shrouded, $27 or $28. Uh, Last Epoch, $34. Helldivers 2 was $40. All these games, lots of fun. Yeah, they weren't 100% perfect on launch, but they monetization is not there. It's just cosmetic. There's nothing interfering. It's just so much fun. I'm glad to see that there's games out there now that aren't taking advantage of the consumer you're just there to have fun and I, I'm, I'm really enjoying that let me know what you think in the comments below i will see you all later